Good morning children. This is Partha Sarudhi, a physical science teacher. Today I am here to discuss a new chapter in 8th class that is Unit 6, Reflection of Light through Plane Surface. We among these all things, we are having different terms called as one is reflection, other one is a light. First of all, coming to the light. Imagine once, what is light? By which we can see the whole world. Imagine once, if there is no light in the universe. Can we see all the objects which are existing in the universe or in the world? No. It is very difficult for us. Though light will cause sensation of vision for us to see all the objects which are existing in the universe. How beautiful this particular world is existing can also be seen by using a concept called as light. What is light? It is a source, it is a form of energy we can call it up. It is a form of energy which causes by means of external physical effects the effects what is between the on the eye which causes sensation of vision we can see all the objects clearly as we are seeing the objects it indicates nothing but what the light is playing a vital role Without white light, we cannot see the objects clearly, which causes a visualized nature for us or which causes sensation of vision. We we'll call that one as nothing but what? Light. What are the sources of the light? Let me see some examples. Sun is a source of light. As well as the fire, what we light it up by taking some quantity of grass or wooden by pouring kerosene on the surface. Light a particular wood, it gives some light there itself. Fire is also nothing but what a light. Incandescent light is also existing there. Electrical discharges, it is also creates some quantity of light. As well as fluorescence, as well as phosphorescence, will also create some quantity of light. These are nothing but what some sources of light. Coming to sources, these sources can be existing of two types luminous sources as well as non luminous sources. What are called as luminous sources? Which emit light by itself, which has a nature of emitting light by itself. We can call them as nothing but water luminous sources. If you go into the movie called as Avatar. Within that movie, we can see there are some plants which are as they are in the night night plants. As a person, hero walks on the particular tree, it emits light by itself. It is nothing but by itself. If any object is emitting light, we can call that one as what a luminous sources. Example for these all things: sun is a luminous source which is which emits light by itself. Next one is what stars are also existing, the twinkling of stars in the sky are also best example for the uh, luminous sources. Uh, not, only in, not only stars, some species in the water, fishes in the water, especially starfish which can be light by itself. Electrical fish also we can call it up. Electric fish also we can call it up, which can be light by itself. That is uh, one example we can give it up. Next one is what? Blow warm species of fishes which emit light by itself. And some insects are also emit light by itself. These all are called as luminous sources which emit light by itself. 
they are called as luminous bodies or luminous sources. Next coming to our non-luminous sources, what are called as non-luminous sources here? They doesn't give light by itself. First point is that when we have to keep it up by themselves, they cannot produce light. But when the, light, when the luminous sources, when the luminous bodies are allowing light rays to be get fall on those objects, we can see those whole objects. Example, moon. As moon is in the existing in the sky, the sunlight from the sunlight when it is falling on the surface of the moon, it can reflect light in itself. As well as earth, when sunlight is falling upon on the surface of the earth, we can see the earth. And planets, celestial bodies which are existing in the universe. Those celestial bodies are also called as what? Non-luminous sources. And all the equipment which is existing in our home. Tables, chairs, etc. Those are also called as what? Non-luminous sources. Which cannot emit light by themselves. But when the light is incidenting on the particular object, we can see those objects clearly. We call them as what? Non-luminous sources. Next one is what? There are, there are some artificial sources of the light. Some artificial sources. What are called as artificial sources? Artificial sources are nothing but what? Which are made by man. Which are made by man to produce light. For example, why they made this light there itself? Means during night time, if it doesn't have any light, can we see the, all the objects? The person who is sitting beside us, we are unable to identify the person who is sitting beside us. So, the daily use of the person as, the, as there is a need of light for a person to exist, to survive on the surface of the earth, some scientists, they, did, they prepared some artificial sources. Those artificial sources can be called as nothing but what? Man-made sources. Example of these are artificial sources. Let me take it up. Fluorescent light, neon light, sodium vapor light. These are some examples. Similarly, some examples. Incandescent light, candle, or some other examples that we have taken there. I have categorized into two different blocks those artificial sources of the light also there, such as fluorescent light, neon light, sodium vapor light. These all lights will emit without rise in temperature. They doesn't allow they to produce to produce light. There is no need of increasing its temperature. Therefore, these sources are called as cold sources. Why means without the, without rising its temperature, they are emitting light. They are emitting light. Therefore, they are called as cold sources. Next coming to our incandescent light as well as candle light. These incandescent light as well as candle light to produce light, they have to they have to they have they must be increased in temperature to emit light when they are heated only or when the temperature is rises only. Then only these particular sources can emit light. We we'll call those sources as hot sources. So by this we understood clearly that what is a light? What does it mean? Which causes sensation of vision? We we'll call it as what light? Simultaneously different types of sources, luminous sources, non-luminous sources, not only that one, artificial sources of the light which are prepared by man. We have also discussed clearly about these all things. Okay children, till now we have discussed about light. It is a source of which causes sensation of vision. Different properties of light we have studied about sources of light we have studied it up. Now we go through with what medium, optical medium there itself. Before going to this topic, I would like to give it up. Whether light require any medium to travel? No, it can travel throughout the space. It does not require any medium, material medium to travel. But to study the characteristics of the light, what we are doing is we are allowing that light ray to pass us through different types of mediums. To know the characteristics of the light. So, for
For that particular purpose, we require an optical medium there itself. We require a medium. What type of medium does it exist? Let me come to first point. Optical medium. What is called as optical medium? It is nothing but what any substance through which a light passes. Any substance you take it up on the surface of the earth through which light can be easily passes. That is called as an optical medium. Some examples. We are taking glass. Through glass the light can be easily propagate. Through water also the light can be easily propagate as well as through air also the light can be easily propagate by which we can see all the objects which are existing around us. That is called, that medium is called as optical medium. Next coming to a transparent medium. There is another type of medium is existing that is called as transparent medium. What is called as transparent medium? Through this particular material, most of the light, the point what we have to keep in our mind is nothing but what, which allows most of the light to pass as for example, 100% of light is allowing to pass us through, the, it is incidenting on transparent material. Then what happened, 90 to 95 percentage of the light, easily it can allow it to pass through that particular material. We will call that material as transparent material or transparent medium. Examples, we can give it up as not same example, above examples, glass, water as well as air are few examples of, uh, uh, of light when it is passing through or transparent medium. This can be an example of this one. Next one is called transparent material. What is called as transparent material? It is a type of material on which when the light ray is passing, when the light ray is allowed to become incident on that particular material, what happens there? Partially it allows the light. It does not allow the whole light to pass through the particular substance. That type of material, we can call them as nothing but what transparent material we can do it up through which partially the light passes. Examples for that one is what take a butter paper, take butter and just allow it to paste on surface of the butter paper and just allow the light ray to be get passing through that one. We cannot identify. Maximum percentage of light will not reflect it it won't come outside but only certain percentage of light will be coming outside that is that, uh, that is through butter paper paraffin wax the wax if you are allowing light to be get passes through wax then also partially the light can be get passes next coming to what greased paper we can find greased paper near auto paper workers there itself as they are working with the grease so that what they will do to clean the, the cleanse of their hands they use some quantity of cloth or paper Take out that paper and just place it and just see it up. Can we see the light clearly? No. Partially the light can be passes through that surface. Oily paper, especially during the uh, rainy season, in the evening time, when we switch on the light, we'll keep some oil paper there. Why? If any insects, maximum number of insects will come and uh, it will be revolving around that particular light, there is a rotating around that particular light. So that insects can be get captured and they stick for that particular oil paper. So when that oil paper is existing, try to see the light through that particular oil paper. We can see partially the light. Dust material are called as a thing but all the transparent material we can give it up. Some examples are given here, such as butter paper, paraffin tax, grease paper, oil paper and next one is what rounded glass also we can give it up through so all this material if we allow the light to be get passed partially the light can be appear that is second point last one last one is what opaque material third one is opaque material what is called as opaque material it is a type of medium which doesn't allow light to pass through it which does not allow light to be get passed through it is called as opaque material we can give it up example wood can light can we keep one wood material and just allow the light to be get passed through we cannot find it a shadow can be created on the back of it 
or opaque bodies create shadow as the shadow is formed by an object it indicates nothing but not it is an opaque material which doesn't allow light to pass through a uh, pass through the particular surface example our human body is also an opaque material when the sunlight is falling upon us sunlight cannot passes through our body due to as it is not passing through our body a shadow will be created in the back of the body Same a same structure can be appear on the surface of the ground. It indicates nothing but what opaque nature. Some examples are given: wood, stone, rubber, ball, etc. So on. These all are nothing but what examples of opaque material. Coming to one more type of medium, that is homogeneous medium. What is meant by homogeneous medium? A medium, an optical medium, which has Uniform composition throughout it. Throughout it, uniformly the composition, the matter will be get existing without variation in the matter. Uniformly as it is existing on the surface, that material is called as nothing but what homogeneous medium. Best examples for that is nothing but what we can go for glass is the best example, diamond is the best example. Distilled water is also the best example, and one more thing is what sheet of clear plastic, clean plastic sheet. If you take it up, it is also the best example for homogeneous medium. Vacuum, where there is an empty space, empty space. If, it is empty, if there is no presence of air, it is called as empty space. That is also equal composition. It can be the existing it up throughout that particular vacuum layer region. That is also the best example. Pure alcohol. It is also and the best example for one type of medium that medium is called as homogeneous medium. It is an optical medium where which has uniform uniform composition composition throughout it that is called as homogeneous medium. Coming to our heterogeneous medium, it is also an optical medium there. Which has a different compositions at different points. Equal composition pattern doesn't exist of matter. The different compositions at different points. It will be that existing. They are called as what heterogeneous medium. Examples: air. If you see air at one particular place, at one particular region, more air can be that existing. If we compare it up in our home, a less percentage of it. If a, a, during evening time, if you go and see it, when we are in the home, we doesn't have that much quantity of air. As we go out of the home, there more quantity of air can be observed. This what air composition is varying from one point to another point, from one place to another place. Air where different compositions will be existing at different places or at different points. Next one is what muddy water. Muddy water means what? Some water we have taken there on the especially if you see near the lakes, where more more muddy will be there at the edge of the puddle lake. More muddy will be get existing there itself, where the soil can be used much more. It can be get mixed up there itself, but whereas in the middle it cannot be existing of same thing there itself. The percentage of mixing mud with the soil water will be less. Therefore, muddy water is also a best example for what heterogeneous medium. The fog existing in Kashmir, if you go and see it, a more fog will be there. We cannot see a person who is standing behind us, beside us. But whereas during winter season in our India, and we can partially see the person who is standing there, some person is standing there itself. Means from region to region, from place to place, the fog it can be get changed up. Mist is also one more example. Next one is what uh, smoke clouds are also one more example for heterogeneous medium. These all mediums helps us to study the characteristics of a light or nature of the light. Further, but the purpose that we need up, but uh, to propagate light through a medium, to, to propagate light, there is no requirement of any material medium there itself. So vacuum through outer space also it can be get propagated. It can be easily propagated. But to study the nature characteristics of the light, we require a medium 
that medium will give us different characteristics of the light then it's we can study much more clearly based upon these all mediums okay children next point is point source of the light what is the need of this particular point source of the light we can study if you know what is point source of light take one cardboard make a hole pin by using pin just make a hole on the surface of it and allow a candle to be get burned take a candle and light the candle the candle gives a flame a light by which we get back through which the light can be get propagated allow the particular candle place near the particular pin hole so what happened there is the light from that particular candle some part of the light will passes to that particular hole and it creates a point source of the, that particular point behaves as nothing but what one source that source is called as point source of the light what is the benefit of this particular point source of the light first benefit is nothing but what through that particular point source of the light light ray can be propagated uniformly in all directions uniformly the light has will be get propagating to the particular point hole in all different direction north east south west but whereas if you go for candle therefore that point is called as point source of the light if you come for candle there itself as a candle when we light the candle the light that the candle will give some flame as it is producing flame what happens there itself each the around that particular flame the flame will get existence in a region each on the surface of that particular plane each point will be having it will behave like a point source so that it can be get propagate light in all different directions one one point source two point source three point source four five six so on all the point sources are combining together and giving what a flame there is a total flame is forming which is propagating non uniformly in all direction therefore this candle source is called as one source that source is called as extended source when each point is behaving like a point source and if it is behaving on the surface of the particular candle then depending upon the size of the particular point it it can have its own it can have its own expansion that it may be differ from one point to other point so for what happened the light is propagating each point source is propagating, propagating uniform light in all different directions therefore each point existing on this particular frame if it is behaving it is having depending upon the nature of the particular point source up to what level the point is existing it can it can it can expand your light uniform the combination of all point sources makes us the light of the flame to be get split up non uniformly around the, in all directions therefore by using this particular point source we can study clearly the characteristics of the light there as it is propagating uniformly in all directions when the light is propagating uniformly in all directions what happens there where the intersection of light is taking place we can clearly study when the lights are intersecting each other at one particular point what happens it creates any major reflected rays the rays uh, where they are where they are uh, where they are intersecting we can study clearly where uh, on which it is incidenting and reflecting back also we can study clearly as the reflected rays where they are intersecting also we can see clearly by using point source but whereas here uh, uh, extended source what happen there itself the reflection rays can be travel in all different directions we cannot estimate estimate clearly the intersection point of that particular reflected rays with the extended source that is which is propagating which is producing light from the candle next point is what ray what is called as a ray we have to study clearly if you have taken a point source point source is propagating rays in all different direction in all different direction the point source is propagating light so the direction of very narrow path of the light in any one direction 
whether north, east, south, west, in any one direction, one specified direction, very narrow path of the light can be represented as a different word, can be called that one as a ray. Therefore, example of that one is what I have taken a light ray moving from right to left. Moving from right to left. In this way, one specific desire to indicate nothing but what arrow indicates it is a light ray within itself which is moving from left to right. That is the concept of ray. Next one is what beam of light. What is called as beam of light? Beam means what? Collection of collection of light rays, a bundle of light rays. Together when we are collecting, that can be called as beam of light. These beams of light will be of three types. First one is parallel beam of light. Second one is convergent beam of light. Third one is divergent beam of light. Within this part of beam of light, <coughs> parallel beam of light, convergent beam of light as well as divergent beam of light will be that existing. What is called as parallel beam of light? When the light rays are propagating parallel to each other, they are not intersecting at any one point. Parallelly the light rays as they are propagating, we call them as parallel beam of light. Best example of diagram is this one we can give it up. Coming to what this one is what convergent beam of light. What is called as convergent beam of light? We have taken here one point. All the rays are trying to pass to this particular point. Moving into the point. Means what the light rays are passing, which are elevating, which are meeting at a point. The light rays are traveling in such a direction that they are, those all light rays are meeting at one particular point. And, are, and passing to the particular point. That particular point is called as, that particular rays are called as convergent beam of light. What is the next one is what? Divergent ray of light. What is called as divergent ray of light? All the light rays propagating, moving in such a direction that moving away from this particular point. Means what? In this particular direction the rays are moving. In this direction all the rays are coming closer to each other through a point it is passing it up. From a point they are splitting up in different directions. That rays are called as divergent uh, rays, we can call it divergent beam of rays, we can call it up. These all are sometimes some concepts of what uh, sources of the light, how the light ray can be get propagated. By this we have completed our topic children. Tomorrow we will come little bit more, little bit more introductory part regarding a, a reflection there. Till now we have studied about light. Tomorrow we will come, we'll come across about reflection of the light, how the light ray can be reflected. We will see it up. Thank you.